Hey, another top 10. They just keep coming, don't they? This one is the top 10 assault units in bold action. Let's go. There we go. So top 10 assault units, but what actually makes a good assault unit? For me, that is the assault units that I keep seeing again and again in tournaments. They are either cheap or they're durable. Most often not both at the same time. They will typically have tough fighter or access to tough fighter. Um, because that is really what makes them killy in close combat. And you need that kill power in order to win close combats. If you're not winning the close combats, you're dead. Right, so so you need the tough fighter. Um, other special rules that help are fanatic, that many armies can get get access to, but of course, um, mostly in uh, Soviets, Germans, and of course the free fanatic for Japanese. Um, it also really helps if you have some. Unit specific special rules like um, the Gurkha Scary Blighter or the Polish Lancer's Lance uh, special rule, and then the ability to actually connect when you assault. Um, that's one of the things where you might say, well, um, Soviet body armored engineers are, are actually kind of good in, in close combat. They're very, very survivable, right? But they don't. They, they can't connect. They only move six inches. They, they can't really connect to anything. So they're not a good assault unit. So you need that a, a ability to be able to reach out and, and hurt the people that you want to hurt. Um, so that is what makes good assault units for me. That is what I'm looking for. These five factors. And of course, the best of them have all five. Right. Let's go. Number 10. That is the Chinese big sword fighters. Now, this is a bit of a cheeky one because they're not actually very good and you don't see them very often. I've seen them in one tournament, but that was actually the WTC um, and they did have a huge effect on the game. Um, I played against these guys and I, I uh, kept well away from them, let me tell you that. They are a true Death Star unit. You can pay 252 points for an infantry unit with 14 veterans. They will practically never die. They take so much punishment without blinking an eye. And if you've got hard cover, then forget it. They're never, ever dying. They, Because they have the swords, they're tough fighters. And at the same time, they have the fanatic special rules. So in close combat, you're going to have to kill every single one of them. And they have the reckless charge, which is a sort of Chinese version of Banzai, um, which means that they can connect. So they are really scary. The only thing that, that makes me pull back from them and say, mm, maybe not, is their price tag. They are a true Death Star unit with double the price of a, a Gurkha unit or something. Um, and are they actually worth it? I would argue not. I, I would argue that, that that's just too many points to sink into that unit. Um, yes, you could cut it down to, to seven men, um, but that would still be a, a well above 100 points for the unit. Uh, they're just very, very expensive, aren't they? Um, but of course, very, very good in close combat. <laughs> um, so, so for me, they're, they're not cheap. They are durable. They do have all the rules. They have the rules to reach out. Um, but other units do this better and for cheaper points. So they go to the 10th place. Ninth place. For me, that is where you sort of get the, um, the cross-section between the Japanese special rules and the the ability to get tough fighter. That is one of the problems with the Japanese, that they don't have uh, access to a lot of tough fighters, but they do in the paratroop section. So the SNLF uh, paratroopers, you pay 100 points for seven veterans. They get to get 
three SMGs for those 100 points. Um, and they have, of course, with the Japanese special rules, they have access to Bansai, they have access to Fnatic, they are veterans, so they're durable, they have tough fighter, they, um, these are just very good. The only thing that, that delegates them to ninth place is that they uh, only have access to three SMGs. Had they access to more as veterans, I think they, these would go higher, uh, just because they, they synergize so well with the Japanese special rules here. Um, so and and that is that's a problem for the Japanese army as a whole. They they really lack access to tough fighter. Um, right, eighth place for me number eight is the Waffen SS cavalry. Um, we don't see them very often on the table, and that is because you have to buy everything. So they become very very expensive. They suffer from something of the same problem that you get with the uh, Death Star unit of the Chinese, the big sword fighters. Um, you pay 144 points for eight veterans. That's that's a lot of that's oh, that's a lot of points for a unit that basically will get shot at a lot and get pinned a lot. But they are cavalry, so they do have that extra reach. Um, they all of them get tough fighter because that's cavalry, and all of them you can buy fanatic on top of that, which makes them very likely to win most close combats, even though they will be slugging it out. But tough fighter will definitely help. So these are guys are really good, but you're definitely paying the points for them. Um, worth it. Mm. Again, I'm I'm not sure. Um, for me, they are a little bit better than, than the Japanese pairs, simply because they have that extra range, but you are paying a lot more points for them. So, right. Place number seven. In seventh place, I have the SAS for the Brits. Um, this picture, of course, needs to go here. We all know this since the Rogue Heroes TV series uh, came out. That this is the this is the best picture of the Long Range Desert Group, as the SAS was called before they became or during their period in the desert. Um, you pay 126 points for seven veterans, so they are expensive, but. They all have. They all come with tough fighter, and they have rifles at the same time. So they have a pistol and rifles, and they are fanatics. Um, they also have extra uh, rules uh, that that sort of are a benefit, but not a massive one in close combat. Um, so they they get extra like uh, the behind enemy lines stuff like that. They they get extra who dares wins. I can't remember what that does but they do get some extra rules not massively beneficial though so this is now we're getting into the territory where the price is sort of the right one the the main drawback for me that delegates the SAS down to seventh place and I have used these uh, successfully and unsuccessfully is that you can only buy them in six uh, in six or seven man teams and that's not really enough for uh, assaulters in my opinion um, they're the smaller size I would ever buy an assault unit. So uh, for me, that that sort of pushes them a little bit down the the scale. But they are very good, and and the the addition of fanatics is really really strong. Seventh place, that was it. Sixth place, the Soviet Storm Group. Now this is a newer unit. Uh, you pay 119 points for seven veterans, so a little bit cheaper than the SAS. They don't get fanatics, but they come equipped with SMGs. So um, moving into the assault, you have a lot of shots to prep your targets with. Um, and they have the special rule called arm to the teeth. Now this special rule is what makes them good. And it's very specific. It means that the enemy cannot benefit from defensive obstacles. So terrain is ignored when the storm group assaults. That is massively beneficial. It's really, really strong, really good. But of course, it's situational in that it only applies when the enemy would get that um, simultaneous combat, that defended obstacle, right? Um, although that, with a good opponent, that will happen more often than you'd like. So, uh, yeah, 
for Soviets, mm, I would consider these. These are really strong. There are, of course, other ways to go with the Soviets that are not uh, assault troops, but this is definitely the best assault troop that they have. Number five. Manchuko Cavalry. Now, I, I had to put this picture in because they just look so goofy and they don't look like they are very strong cavalry at all. Um, there's something off with the rules for for both the Manchuko Cavalry and for the Mongolian Cavalry for the Soviets. Um, those little ponies, I'm, I'm sure they were hardy. I'm sure they were tough. I'm sure they were great for scouting duties, but that they give them tough fighter and makes them into to really good charging cavalry. That makes no sense at all. Right. Just a little thing. Um, bigger horses for cavalry charges. Bigger horses is a the thing. They're fast and they are tough and, and that's what you need. Not, not uh, the, these ponies. Um, right. You pay 120 points. And I think you should buy them in larger groups, so not the seven, eight-man units, um, but ten, because they come only in regulars, and that's the one drawback from the Machuca Cavalry. Um, you can only get them regulars. They are cavalry. They do have tough fighter because they're cavalry. They have access, because they're uh, Japanese, to Fnatic and Banzai, which are really beneficial. So this is a better version and way cheaper than the um, the Waffen SS cavalry that I talked about earlier. Like the Waffen SS building a Waffen uh, veteran SS unit, you paid 144 points. Here you pay 120 for 10 regulars. They are of similar uh, punch weight. Um, because what makes cavalry survivable is not that they're veteran necessarily, it is that they have the escape move and, and a lot of bodies here as well. So they are sort of similar in their survivability, um, but, but way cheaper. So these are a really good unit and I'm seeing these more and more being used in competitive Japanese lists as well. Of course, because they have access to Tough Fighter, the only unit in the Japanese list where everyone gets Tough Fighter really nice you can also take these actually on foot so japanese cavalry on foot where you can buy tough fighter also a thing but uh, then you don't get the reach of the cavalry um, and the escape move right number four the bamboo spear fighters um this is not necessarily a good unit it's pretty crap and the, uh, everything that's written about the bamboo spears online um, that's not bold action related is that they were weird and crappy and basically never used because why would you? And this, we, we have here a picture of a Japanese high school teaching the young girls uh, to use the spears here. They would just get cut down by a machine gun, right? Um, so in real life, crappy. In the game, not necessarily so. They have one thing really going for them, and that is that they are dirt cheap. They're dirt cheap. 75 points. For 75 points, you, you get 15 inexperienced bamboo spear fighters. That is a massive unit. It has a huge footprint, and in close combat, you roll 15 dice, and that's what it really is about. That number of the weight of dice. You're still fanatic. You get bonsai, so if you connect with the enemy, you are extremely likely to hurt whatever it is. There is nothing in this game that won't get hurt by 15 order dice being thrown at it, and that includes, by the way, tanks. 15 order dice, if they connect with your steward, they get, uh, and you ha haven't moved, uh, that's 7 plus to penetrate you. They will get that glancing hit. So, uh, not very not very good. So, almost everything can be hurt by them. Infantry units definitely will be hurt. Yes, you're very likely to lose this unit against dedicated fighters like veterans. Or assault units or a large units of regulars even and you're very likely to lose them to just fire moving up the table but if you connect 
you will damage something. And, and that's the main point. You're using your infantry with bamboo spear fighters, and you see these sometimes, like there is a, a whole uh, army build that's called the bamboo forest, where you have all bamboo spear fighters, and you just have waves of them moving forward. The front wave providing cover for the second wave and the third wave, and, 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 and you just charge. You run up the table and you charge. You will lose two or three units going up, but you will connect and you will definitely hurt the enemy. So uh, they get my number four. Why not number three, two and one, you ask? Well, because there are other units that are way more deadly than this. And they are number three, Gurkhas. With Gurkhas, you get eight veterans for 112 points. That's very cheap for what you get because they have the special rule that makes the Gurkhas worth it, scary blighters. Scary blighters means that the enemy halves their attacks in close combat. That means you're very, very likely, if you roll enough, if you have enough infantry in your unit, that's why I never use five-man Gurkhas. Um, if you have enough of them, you will definitely win that close combat. It's very, very mathematically likely that you'll win. At the same time, they synergize well with the special rules for the Brits. You have up and atom, you have blood curling charge, and you have toughest boots to choose from. Each of these are good in their own way. For me, there's one that stands above the rest, but each of them have a benefit to you. So the, the special rules for the Brits actually benefit these Gurkhas really well. Um, so, of course, they're there. But what's better than a Gurkha, you ask? Well, a para Gurkha. Oh, and by the way, um, look at the hats on these guys. Aren't they just gorgeous? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what that even is. I think it's a, uh, like, um, impact absorbing helmet, sort of, so they don't bump their heads. Um, maybe it's some sort of um, traditional Nepalese hat. I'm not sure. But if you're going to mull your paragurkas, this is one of the pictures you could use. They also used, like, small para helmets as well and they had regular helmets the the bridge helmet and they of course used the the slouch hats as well and this picture of the regular Gurkhas in the desert here um rem look at the here the hats my Gurkhas are all um model with the regular british helmet because all the pictures i can find of Gurkhas actually in combat they were wearing helmets not the slouch hats that people so often uh, portray them with so um, the Gurkha Paris are, of course, a little bit better. You pay in, uh, some extra points, so 120 points for eight, eight veterans. They still get Scary Blighter. They, they still get Up and Adam, Blood Curling Charge, or Toughest Boots, but they're also stubborn, which means that they're pretty much invulnerable to... Not invulnerable, but they're very safe from flamethrowers, which is the main drawback of regular Gurkhas. A regular Gurkha unit is a little bit vulnerable because they're... A flamer will still uh, hit them very hard and is pretty likely to make them run away. But the Paragurkas, not so. They just take the flamethrower to the face um, and survive. But they're not the best assault unit, are they? They're number two in my list here. Um, for me, um, these are great. These are great units and they, they synergize very well into the British units. So the army builds are possibly the greatest for the Brits with, with the Gurkhas. But there is one unit where the unit itself is actually better. And that is Polish Lancers. Polish Lancers at 112 points for seven veterans. So similar to the Gurkhas or 104 point for eight regulars. Um, their damage output is just massive compared to the Gurkhas because they have the Lancers special rule. The Lancers means you get two attacks. And since you're cavalry, you get tough fighter. So each attack you might re-roll and get... So potentially a, one Lancer could get four hits on an opponent, which is insane. The damage output of Polish Lancers is just massive. It's Nobody can compare. Um, they, at the same time, they have the um, the cavalry special rules, so they can uh, escape move, which makes them very survivable, and they can reach out. Um, 
that it's it's just you you can't do better than this. Um, the the main drawback is of course the the army builds that you can build with the Polish lancers are not necessarily great. You're relying on all cavalry builds basically because the Polish army is not great in other aspects. Um, and and then national special rules are not great either although they do get one benefit that's pretty cool and that is that they can reroll morale tests so polish lancers are also pretty safe from flamethrowers although not uh, completely so that would be my number one a polish lancer connecting to an enemy and just wiping them out and then because they're cavalry they can of course roll 2d6 uh, in their consolidation move giving them extra range. So these are very, very, very good and possibly the best assault units. Now, what did I miss? Anything you would have liked me to have added in this? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.